Hello, hello. My name is Magda Mok. I'm a CEO of International Coaching Federation. And thank you for everybody who decided to join us today for our traditional LinkedIn Live. As the year is coming to an end, I'm super excited to have my today's guest, Tracy Sinclair. Uh, Tracy is a uh, master certified coach, member of ICF, leader for ICF for years, and also very, very accomplished coach, mentor, supervisor, trainer, assessor, you name it. Tracy does it all. And uh, Tracy and I know each other for quite a while. As I said, Tracy has been a leader for the uh, for ICF for many, many years. And uh, I am delighted that Tracy is joining us today because, you know, wh whichever part about coaching you mentioned, Tracy has some experience, some observations, some reflections to share and offer. So Tracy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Magda. I've been looking forward to this and it's a wonderful privilege to be able to come and talk about coaching. Yeah, this is this is what it is all about, right? And uh, you also need to know that Tracy has been an award winner and also a um, finalist for the uh, uh, Thinkers 50 Marshall Goldsmith Award in coaching and mentoring. So uh, I could spend, you know, about the entire broadcast talking about um, different things that that Tracy did, does, will do. But uh, but Tracy, why coaching? You you had quite a significant career in uh, business, um, and 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 then and then and then comes Tracy the coach. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I think why coaching? A couple of reasons actually. Mm -hmm. Within all the different roles that I've had. Um, which have been quite a few before coming into coaching. Um, I used to be a teacher and a translator and an interpreter. Then I became an operational leader in financial services, a project manager, a change agent. And one of the things that's at the heart of all of those things is communication. Mm. And one of the things that I loved about coaching was how it facilitates communication. And I don't just mean in the traditional sense of good communication skills, but in a much deeper way of how do you truly connect with someone? How do you truly tap into them and their essence so that you can support them, develop them, nurture them, inspire them, uh, understand them probably primarily? Um, so that was one thing that I, I just felt when I discovered coaching, thought, gosh, this is such a powerful communication vehicle mm. that is applicable almost anywhere. Um, and, and, I, and that was really, I think, professionally, what, what, what made me just dive straight in. Yeah. You mentioned being a, a change agent, project manager, and we all know that uh, many change initiatives are not successful because of lack of communication or the communication at the very superficial level, rather than, as you mentioned, this deeper one. You know, when I when I looked at your website, uh, it just it was just so beautiful because you opened the website and first thing you see is turning aspiration into reality. <laughs> How did you come up with that? I don't know, actually. That might have, must have been one of my creative moments. Who knows? But but I guess it, it is about that, isn't it? Mm. In a way, you know. And it's um, I think also where this this idea came from is, I'm sure many of us can recall times when we've been on a webinar or a conference or a program or a you know some kind of development opportunity, and you you leave that on a high. You mm. leave inspired and thinking, oh, I'm going to go and change the world and I'm transforming myself. And then within two and a half days, your life is completely back to normal and it's all forgotten. And so the key is, is how do you leverage that high? Mm. How do you turn the high and the, the, the inspiration or the insight into something that actually is sustainable and practical and 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 that's where the reality bit comes in because if we don't if we can't turn things into reality then they just stay dreams right which of course are lovely to have but we want we want to actually turn them into tangible features of our lives so i think that's that's the essence really of where that comes from 
Mm. Yeah, another tidbit about change management is that coaching is one of the most significant and powerful supporter for learning, right? So um, so communication and, and sustainable learning, that's, that's quite a lot right there. Um, I mentioned in, in this very short introduction of yours that you are a coach, you are a mentor, you are a supervisor, but you also do offer training. So, so many people stay in one of these lanes. You decided to explore all of them. So uh, does it help? Does it distract you? Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, probably, but... but... Well, if I can be really honest, I love diversity of, and variety. Um, one of the reasons that I left corporate life many moons ago to set up on my, my own business was because I want to do the things that I want to do. And I happen to want to do a lot of things. And I, I just love the variety. And I like to be involved. You know, I have, um, what's that? that term my children use FOMO I think it's called fear of missing out you know so where it when it comes to coaching I think I have a bit of FOMO going on and I just I just love all of these different aspects mm. um, so yeah it it means a bit of plate spinning but um but I I couldn't have it any other way to be honest I just really and and they inform each other mm. mm -hmm. you know, teaching informs how I coach because it keeps me fresh supervision helps ground me in some of the psychological principles that underpin coaching and so on and so forth so for me it's a really nice blend yeah so if we can stay for a second with supervision because in the coaching world of course uh, this is this is something that have been uh, has been discussed quite a bit and from very diverse points of view from people who do not believe that supervision as a separate uh, discipline, if you will, is needed because it's a part of a training to those who believe that uh, supervision is, as you said, anchoring a person and it's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for professional growth to a coach and everything in, in between. Nowadays, we hear more and more that the clients actually are looking for that supervision being a part of coaches' uh, portfolio, not being a supervisor per se, but um, uh, being a uh, uh, in a supervisory relationship. So uh, clearly, you are a supervisor. So so where, where do you land on this particular spectrum? Yeah, I mean, obviously, everyone is entitled to their own perspectives of mm -hmm. what's valuable and, and all of those things. But I got interested in training to be a supervisor through being supervised, because oh. I'm very open and I'll, I'll engage in any learning or development opportunity I can. And I heard about this thing called supervision, um, got myself a supervisor and found it to be incredibly transformational. Mm -hmm. um, and and different to being coached, because I have a coach also, um, but it's different to being coached. There was something that was much, um, it's very difficult to describe in a way, a subtle difference, but, but really inviting me to step back and reflect upon my coaching practice and in, a, in a very specific way that is in service of me being the best I can be. Mm -hmm. But not to look at my necessarily my skills and my competencies but my, my being so for me there's a there's a there's a territory within supervision that is very rich around looking at the the, the coach as an instrument of their work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. instrument and and so it's a it's a wonderfully developmental tool I think to to really reflect upon how am I being when I'm working with my clients mm -hmm. that's over and beyond questions like, you know, what do I do when my client doesn't stop talking or <laughs> how do I engage my client in how they feel as well as how they think, you know, those more practical things. Um, so clearly I stand on the side of supervision being really, really valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just say to anyone who's not done it, have a go <laughs> and yeah. see what you think. You know, this is what we all, all often say to a prospective clients, right? Saying, if you never tried it, try it. 
if you don't like it, you don't like it. But but I, I sense that there is a little bit of the same with supervision. Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, I, I did not mention, but I know that the little introduction um, banner mentioned also that you wrote a book. So here we go for more again, right? Uh, but I would like to uh, talk to you a little bit about this yet another facet of your work what I'm very interested in and it is your uh, utilizing and, and championing I guess coaching for social progress. I know that you created this uh, organization coaching with conscience and uh, uh, fascinating to me that uh, it seems that there are two foci of, of your work through that and one is to um, offer coaching skills to young people, right? 18 to 25. And then the other one, utilizing coaching to avoid mental crisis. You know, so many times we have to say, uh, coaching is not uh, um, mental counseling or, or this kind of service. It's, but, but that specific wording about coaching, helping avoid mental crisis. So, Please do share a little bit more about this this work. I mean, they don't necessarily are separated in my mind because what we hear lately is that the mental crisis is hitting young people with tremendous, tremendous uh, force. I've seen the UN uh, report maybe about a month ago that the number of uh, anxiety and um, depression and this kind of mental um, difficulty in young people raised by 25% from the year prior or during the pandemic anyway. It's, it's staggering, it's, it's tragic in fact. So, so even more so, I'll be very, very interested in hearing more about, about your work for social progress. Yeah, thank you. It's, um, it's something where my heart energy goes more and more and more, actually. And I'm really trying to leverage the business side of my work to support me in developing the, the coaching with conscience side. The, the two areas are separate and combined at the same time, as you said, because there is a huge crossover with the youth, younger population and mental health. But um, the, the, the model is very simple in a way on the mental health side of it. It's very much around... Um, I'm trying to connect and form collaborations with organizations where mental health challenges have a, a you know are present. Mm. So it could be things, I mean, one of the charities I work with is a leading UK mental health charity that just specifically focuses on that. But sure. but it's but there are other subtleties. For example, I'm looking to um work with charities around finding missing people. Um, um around supporting the homeless and of course anyone that's involved in any of those areas knows that mental health challenges are are rife in those things mm -hmm. many people who are homeless are experiencing mental health challenges and I'm sure those families who have family members who are missing experience mental health challenges so mm -hmm. the whole idea really is is as you say is not to address mental health necessarily because that is more within a therapeutic domain sure. but I do strongly believe that that boundary is not a binary brown boundary I think there's a gray space as I call it between the disciplines where I think if we can come in with a coaching intervention before someone's mental well-being slides too far mm. it could be you know enormously positive in mitigating and perpetuating um experiences that are you know incredibly painful for people um and and at the same time on a very practical level could actually also um save the use of resources that are yeah. needed for mental health challenges mm. of course that are very thin on the ground so so that side of it is you know there's a very simple model that i work with is that i'm trying to anyone that is in my alumni community who has worked with me in any or trained with me in those capacities, I try to support them by finding them coaching opportunities to help them have meaningful work, mm. either on a pro bono or a, or a reduced fee basis to give them the capacity to start building their coaching log. Um, I can then try to organize fairly large scale coaching opportunities to match with 
volunteers in charities or staff in charities who would otherwise never have access to coaching. Yeah. Um, and everybody wins, you know, so I'm, I'm trying in a way to be a, just a bit of a matchmaker to try to, I can find the community for coaches. I've got a, a wonderful community of coaches um, and I just join them up with people who want the coaching. Um, and on the young people side, that's just a whole nother very exciting area, not only from, you know, the challenges around the mental health, but also just the huge opportunity that we have to expose young people to the opportunity to not just receive coaching or be coached, but to be coaches. Yeah. And that's the model that's very exciting there is, is offering them an experience of knowing what it's like to be coached. And I've got, you know, literally just this last week, I've been training a group of coaches towards their ACC credential who are 20, 21, 22, um, and they are just absorbing this and are, are telling such wonderful stories, how coaching is changing the way they think, the way they engage, mm -hmm. the way they hold themselves. They're using it with their friends and family. Um, and then to provide them with the skills to be coaches and, and therefore become young leaders and have access to this kind of qualification at a younger age um, mm -hmm. is amazing. You know, I was just thinking 18 to 25, that could be that that's this cusp of becoming an adult, creating, right? You're, you're fresh out of school or you're still in maybe in college and then you suddenly have to start this adulting thing. And uh, and um, we, we, we keep hearing more and more that young people, of course, are more aware of coaching. And they also are more willing to engage in a coaching relationship. And the flip side of it is that many times we hear that younger people would love to work with a younger coach. Uh, they are very respectful of their mentors, of their you know leaders, um, uh, managers. But for the coach, they would love somebody that they don't need to expect playing what they mean when they say something, right? So somebody who lives in their own reality. So so this is great. And even in ICF, we start seeing uh, younger, younger uh, uh, in age um, people joining as members. So that's, that's great because we also have great examples of programs that are engaging young people, as you said, not only to be coached, but also to um, get those skills, either becoming professional coaches or, or being able to use coaching skills in their regular work. So that's great. That That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. And also this term of mental well-being is, as you mentioned about, you know, working with people who are maybe on a cusp, but not letting them slip more into a mental difficulty. So, so th th that is this mental well-being is becoming quite a um, term in, in corporate world. So yeah. clearly something very, very use, very useful as well. We are coming to an end of our time, Tracy, but I wanted to ask you because, because we're coming upon the holidays for, for many. And as wonderful, festive and celebratory time as it is, it also can be super stressful. Mm -hmm. uh, the preparation, maybe the travel, what to get as a gift. Um, so what, 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 what Coach Tracy Sinclair, MCC, would have to offer to our viewers um, as, as maybe a little tip before the holidays? Well, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is, is pause for breath because I think the run up to the to the to Christmas can be quite frenetic. I know it. I know it is for me, and there can be so many things to do. Um, the other thing, I guess, from a from a coaching perspective, that comes to my mind is is for us to really ask that traditional coaching question of what do you really want? Mm -hmm. Is it when it seems as though beyond, after all of the family festivities and the parties and the mayhem or whatever anyone else is doing, Christmas does seem to offer at least a time of the year to have a pocket of pause mm -hmm. you know, where you can, for however long it might be, down tools and take some time to reflect. 
um, which of course is what coaching is, isn't it? Is it's it's a reflective practice in itself. Yeah. And so that would be my invitation is for us to all take a pocket of pause, as we might say, and um, and just reflect and allow ourselves to settle, to land, to regroup, to be kind to ourselves. Um, and, and, and trust that the answers will come. You know, in coaching, we talk about trusting the process. Yeah. If we give ourselves that time to pause, then uh, trust that the answers will come. Well, thank you. That was, that was wonderful and quite a, quite a lovely um, closing to our time together, Tracy. Thank you again so much for joining us today and uh, wishing you and your family a very Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. And likewise, enjoy your time and uh, until the new year. Thank you.